Sweet. Right, we're ready to go. So, um, first things first, um, I want to do a release on Monday, ideally. Um, so, oops, oops, oh gosh, I gotta get this out of my way, okay. Um, so we're shooting for a release on Monday. Okay, um, and then let's see, we'll go over sort of what's been done recently. Okay, uh, da, da, da. okay, this is nice. Let's see, got test for load and save. Okay, yeah, let's see. Okay, so these are the two things that are relevant here. And um, we'll just go over these real quickly for everyone else to know about. Um, so, um, so recently, this PI, let's see. Just so everyone knows about these. Oops, whoa, paste without formatting, please. All right, so this PR that create definition for each arg, like if not, so basically what this wa was is um, we wanted to make it so that if, um, if you add the op decorator on something, and I'll show you an example here. If you add the op decorator to something, um, and like to some function to make it an operation, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't have you don't pass any inputs, like so, it will just take these. Um, uh, it'll take the arguments to the function, and it'll grab their names, and it'll make a definition out of each one, and. It will only do that, though. It'll only do this if it can figure out what is the data type of each of these um, arguments here. Um, and we need to expand this. Actually, let me make a new issue for this. Um, OK, subspec. Um, yeah, OK. So we need to expand this to basically take sort of arbitrary data types. Um, well, somewhat arbitrary. We can do basically name tuple and things like that. Um, we'll like dict of. Uh, dict and list containing name tuples or data classes, we could do that kind of expansion there um, because we have the subspec stuff, um, which is actually the other, or no, that was not the other pull request, but there's another pull request that went up for that. Um, but basically what we're doing is just making it easier to define an operation. So if you have any function and you just throw op on it, now you're going to have an operation. And then obviously what's going to, what that's going to look like is uh, sort of what we've already been doing. Uh, if you don't have the definition in the global space, um, you can just say, you know, operation, you know, the, the function dot op and then inputs and then whatever the input is here. Um, and it'll show up as... Um, that that will give you the correct definition, uh, and so this basically is just sort of a usability thing, so that we don't have to you know write inputs. And the next thing, I think there is a issue up. Um, there should be an issue up. That let's see. Uh, oh yes, we also have an issue up for basically if there's only if you put a type annotation on it and it's got one single value as a result, then uh, this is one that somebody could jump on and, and do, um, then we'd create the definition for the result. Um, and that way, you know, if this thing returned anything, you could just like, if it returned a bool and you said, you know, arrow bool with the Python type hinting, then we'd get, uh, you know, in op.outputs, you'd have result and the definition would be of primitive bool. Um, and the other thing is that when we do this, this is sort of leading into something that we're going to need to start doing. Um, we've talked about this a bit before, which is sort of like this concept of namespacing. Um, so if you look at like, you know, uh, 
GitHub, we have Intel slash DFFML. So Intel is kind of like the namespace. If you've done C++, you know, you'd import from STD. Um, that's the standard library is the namespace. Um, and namespacing is just a way to sort of group certain like things, right? Um, and so what we're ending up, what we currently have is this giant mess of like, if I say, for example, I noticed this the other day. Um, so where did this go? Um, okay, so I create this data as another example I added the other day. Um, but so you create this data flow. Um, and well, what are the, all the definitions? Well, there's data to print, key, mapping, and value, right? So if I have any other operations that have key, mapping, or value as their definition name, now all of a sudden it's overridden. Um, so what this, what this uh, patch also did, or a subsequent patch after this one, um, it made it so that when these uh, definitions are created on the fly, it actually creates them in the format of module name dot function that we're wrapping dot input name. So, uh, for example, dffml.mapping.create key ends up becoming dffml.mapping.create.key. dot key, um, and so that's how that would work. Um, and that way, you know, if you look in the definitions, and we had two things where they had key, then they wouldn't collide; they wouldn't override each other. Um, so that's a thing that's happening, and we're going to need to start doing that to sort of, you know, everything. Um, so that we don't get collisions. Um, so if you're creating new definitions, just sort of keep in mind that uh, we should probably be trying to namespace them. Um, and that means, so, uh, arguments created on the floor. Input dict created if not exists. Um, definitions created for each argument. Um, and then keep in mind, um, when you're creating definitions that can't use this, um, make sure you make the definition name in the format of module or python dot path dot to file dot function name dot argument name. Okay. Okay, and then um, let's see what did we cover on Tuesday. Uh, I think I did something since Tuesday that everybody needs to know about too. Um, oh no, okay, we got that. Um, so if we didn't, if you didn't hear it on Tuesday, basically like for all the examples and all the doc strings, we can just do from dffml import whatever. You don't have to do the full path down with dffml.util.asyncTestCase or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, it's just an ease of use thing. Um, and so if you're writing examples or doc strings, just do from dffml import whatever you want to import. Um, just don't do that within the package itself. Uh, that will break things. You have to use all of the specific relative imports if you're within the main dffml directory there. Um, and then the other thing that everyone should probably know about is, oh yeah, this patch. Um, Hashim got this one the other day, and basically what this does is it allows us to, so for example, if you have a class that has a config, and the config has a, uh, it has some, def it has default arguments, like so this one, this fake testing three has this config with all, the every, every argument has a default, has one argument, and it has a default, so you can just instantiate it like so, um, and usually, if, if you're wondering why is this why is this interesting, it's because all classes take a config object. And so previously, if you didn't pass a config object, even if there was no fields to set in that config object, you'd have to pass it some, you know, an instantiated config. Now you can just call or instantiate the object, and it will it knows that it it goes and checks that everything is a default, and then it just instantiates it. Um, so that's the other thing. All right. So, 
let's move on to um, all right we got a full house today so who we're gonna have to be quick here because uh, so we got 45 minutes um, so try to sort of budget appropriately and if we can take something offline let's take it offline um, so who who wants to go first yeah so can I hear me? Yeah, Agen. Yeah. Uh, so like in the FFM pack now, uh, currently I am not testing for anything. Like after we get the chip file, uh, what do you like assert for? What do you test for? Like is the file creator or how do we assert that? Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. Um. Well, I would just sort of do a f check on the. F file size right now um, and make sure it's like above some value um, because I suspect we don't want to do a hash of the let's see we've got FFmpeg okay were you able to throw does it does it I haven't looked at the CI recently did you were you able to put the mm, I don't see anything that might be doing that let's see Okay. Uh, let's see. Where's the test for this? Where does it run? What package? Uh, in examples of the pack in the test folder itself. Okay. Like, is the CI running that? Like, I, well, I that's my know. question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's okay. see. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering here. So, test, test operations. Um, examples of FFmpeg. So yeah, the examples, running things in the examples is funny. Sometimes it seems to run it, sometimes it does not. Um, so let's take a look. Like, uh, even if it runs, I don't think it will fail because we are, I'm just essentially, I'm not doing anything to fail. Yeah, if you call out to FMPEG though, it should probably fail because I don't think this container that this builds in has FFmpeg. So. Oh, okay. So that sort of is our clue. Yeah, okay. So I'm not seeing anything, which means our example tests. Oh, okay. The example, the running of the examples might be broken, which I sort of suspected at some point, which is not good. But okay, so that's something to know about. Um, I ran it locally, though. Huh? I, I ran it locally. Like, the code works. We have to get it running easily. Okay, great. Um, so this is important that we know this, though, because I was messing with something in the um, SQL, the custom SQL example, and I, I was like, I don't, I don't feel like this test is running, and I think we've concluded that that test is not running. Um, so let's make an issue for that. So this issue was supposed to be for. Um, what was this issue before? Do you guys remember what this was? What was this? Uh, I may not have even said. Let's see, we were talking about uh, create definition for each args. Def does not exist. It's something to do with creating the definition for each args. Um, some extension of that. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay. this guy and then this issue is for um, the examples don't seem to be running
So it seems like the custom source and other examples may not be running for n equals dot target in the CI. Okay. Um, so, okay. All right. Um, and then, are you? Do you need a review on this, or do you? Um, I didn't. Do you comment it back? Didn't you? No, I'll I'll finish it today or tomorrow, so we can try to include it in Monday's weeks. Okay. We can review after that. Okay, but great. That's the only things which I have today. Right? Great. Okay. Cool. Thanks for jumping back on or getting back to me here in, in this because I was I was I, I haven't been uh, super looking at this one because I know it's sort of a long running thing so I was just waiting for you to let me know when you when you had things yeah. that needed review so perfect yeah. thank you all right great um, so let's see who's up next so. <laughs> who's on the call first you know, oh, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. what do you guys use to view uh, like the docs while you are editing? It? Because in my VS Code, those literally goes from shock and just for your Uh, okay. It's not. I don't have any sort of good solution. Basically, what I do is, um, I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't really have a good solution. I mean, what I what I do do is I just do. I add this. If you put HTTP, where are we? Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, so if you just do HTTP equals one and then scripts docs, like if you're in VS Code, you might just like keep the terminal open and run that every time, but it's not it's not perfect. The problem is like with doing Sphinx Sphinx's build time is so long that I don't know if there's a good if anyone's made like a good editor integration, like a markdown or RST preview type thing, but to do the full Sphinx. Um yes. so yeah, I don't know. It might this, this is not it's it's not great that's not the best workflow there um, so yeah I guess if you find anything out if anyone finds anything out let the rest of us know um, so. uh, but I don't really have a great solution for you sorry right. whoever wants to go next just go for it I'm gonna write down some notes Hey John. Yeah, sure. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Yash? Yeah, it's going fine. Uh, I didn't review for the PR I just made now. Regarding oh. the flow of JavaScript, I just starting to work on it. Okay, let me see. I may have I'm I've got two computers open here, so let me just go to the other one real quick. I think I may not have hit the review finished button on that one. Let's see. I was just looking at it. Uh, da, da, da. Oh nope! God damn it! I did not. This always happens to me. This happens to me a lot. If you guys are like waiting for me to review your stuff, quite likely, I have forgotten to hit the submit review button. Um, so sorry about that. Just always just ping me and be like, hey, what happened? It's usually I forgot to hit a button. Okay. Um, and da, da, da. okay, yes, this. I mean, you're definitely on the right track here. Um, so that's good. Good job with this. You're on the right track. Um, I mean, the review sort of says all I have to say about this, but basically you don't really need these PyPy operations. Um, nice work fixing up this test. Uh, that's good. And then I haven't run this yet, um, but this is, it looks, it looks good. Let's see, should we check? I don't think, did I check the CI? I think, I think I feel like I tried to check the CI. Oh yeah. And then I got, I have to do something else. Okay. None type object has no attribute loader. Module from spec. What? What the fuck? Run JavaScript. Oh. Oh. Let's see. Ah, it's because this is still there. 
this is so what this is doing is it's getting the um, this is this this is utility command line utility here let me just pop up the docs Uh, all, right. all right, so this is the command line utility that you can also import and use. Um, be also used programmatically to extract information from setup. .py files, um, but only for setup.py files. Um, so it is a Python specific. Thing. Yeah. Python. Uh, for this, you'll want to. Uh, you you don't. I don't even think you need to do this. Actually, let's see. Yeah, I don't think we even need to do this because you can just sort of run. Once you've got the cloned Git repo. You can just run it on the directory. Um, you won't need this here. Um, let's see. So here, you'll want to. Here, you'll want to have the input be something that be the input for um, run npm audit. Uh, so you'll want to make the definition um, run npm audit dot op dot inputs package okay yeah package um, so this basically what this does is it says um, we create this new input object and we say the value will be um, value would be repo dot directory um, so this tells um, this gives the data flow an input which it sees should go to run npm audit, um, which is going to use that as its package argument. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. OK, cool. Thank you. Of course. OK, I'm glad we looked at this, because yeah. I obviously missed some stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, so replace. Yeah, I think it will be done now. What? Uh, it will be completed till tomorrow, I guess, then JavaScript. Works. OK, sweet, sweet. This is very exciting. Yeah, now we'll also need to sort of update the documentation and stuff um, eventually yeah. here. Um, but yeah, so we're well on our way to sort of, and then we'll have this this scaffold where we can start, you know, just doing this. This is just, you know, it's just sort of rinse and repeat, right? We we've get, we've got, uh, we'll have JavaScript in here, and we've got Python, and, and then we'll probably want to tweak Python a little bit because basically right now it clones the Git repo, it grabs the name, and then it reruns the old stuff, um, which then goes and downloads the latest package and runs Bandit on it, right? So then you're not actually running Bandit on the right thing, so we probably just want to run Bandit right there. Um, uh, so we'll want to tweak the documentation. Something. Yeah, also the, the documentation. documentation. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Replace um, setup py reading with json.loads of the package.json. Or wait, you don't even need to do that. Um, remove setup.py reading name. Uh, modify input to data flow. All right. Anything else, Yash? No. All right, looking good over here. Nice job. Um, 
who's up next? Uh, so, uh, can you hear me, John? Yes. Uh, so, did you t uh, have you had a chance to look at my old pull request? I have not had a chance to look at the Unify CLI stuff. Um, okay, so this uh, is yeah, it's gonna it's probably just, gonna be a weekend thing for me because this is you know <laughs> this is tough stuff. <laughs> I will I will update the brand so that it's not very hot 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 and something. Cool, thanks. Okay. Also, uh, I just opened another pull request. Uh, I wanted you to take a look at that. Okay, great. Let's look at that. I think. Oh, also, I should. I, should, I wanted to say there's going to be. Um, we'll want to add a CLI command to go along with this, maybe in a different pull request. But we have. That's also what I wanted to. All right, great, about, like, great. Because. So that I. Uh, yes, you can go first. So, uh, oh, let's just make this. DF. Because um, we're pre-processing with a data flow. So let's just change this. We'll just change this. Uh, da -da. Looking good, looking good. So the, uh, I wanted to ask you yeah, about the test. I, I haven't completed them. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking that I was trying to write an operation for changing one of the features values. Mm -hmm. So I wanted an input on that. If that's a good idea, and how should I go about it? Okay. For testing. Um, so or should just use one of the uh, given data flow. One of the given data flows already. Let's think about this. Okay, so let's think about this real quick. Um, okay. Um, so. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's just do, we don't need, let's see. Let's just say you can simplify this. Okay, first off, you can, can simplify these tests by, mm, eh, okay, maybe not. Um, let's just do it this way for now. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so edit feature, edit feature, config feature. Okay, so here's what I would suggest. Um, take, let's see. So our, our, our source takes um, features, the data flow, and the other source, right? So let's use, um, okay, we can probably use memory source here, actually, because that'll just be, you know, easier. Okay, um, and so we'll have the source be memory source. We'll have a few repos in it. So um, let me just, uh, okay, so let me just write this here. Um, have the sub source be memory source with a few records. I keep saying repos, god damn it. It's in it, um, and then you have features, and then you create a new definition. So we create a new definition for each feature, um, which means that so this operation should let's see the operation should take the feature. Da, 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 da. 
Okay, here's what we're going to do. Just have an operation, basically have an operation, have one operation which ooh, uh, um, okay. I'm just thinking, okay, so I'm thinking what I'm thinking here is we could have one operation that just like multiplies something by 10 right and then we just take all the features and we say run them through the multiply by 10 operation and then the question is well how do we get them back out right and into their their previous locations um yeah i thought that about with adding one to every feature but then, yeah. I, then I got stuck at this same thing yeah how would i go about it? how do you go about yeah. it yeah so which multiplies input by 10. that's that's just sort of an easy one because then you just add a zero. Um, plus one is good too. Um, uh, let's see. Um, and then okay. Let me just look at the output operations. Or er, I feel like the associate one is the one that we need. I haven't written the docs on that one yet. Um, let's see. Where is the associate one used? I think it's actually used in the... Oh, wow, it's used in the skeleton operations readme. That's a weird place for the old doc the only documentation for it to be. Um, oh, God, and this is the way old syntax. Okay, this needs to be updated, too. Okay, can someone make an issue for updating the readme here while I'm doing this so that I don't take time to do that while we're talking? So, let's see, because I'm going to forget afterwards. Okay, so, remap associate.result. Calc string result. What is that going to do, though? Let's see. Where is the other one? Okay, this is a good one. All right, great. We added these Ben spec operations. Okay. And that ends up just giving us, let's see, associate spec. RPM file name with binary is PIE. And that ends up just giving us... Uh, that guy. Okay, so maybe we needed some sort of other thing to add to the associate spec here. Um, so this associate operation, this output operation, basically what it does, it says, okay, take the last argument and you know map it and and, and give me um, so the take take the last argument to this spec is binary PIE. So so this data flow, what it does is it has a bunch of uh, uh, RPM files or tar files and packages um, for Linux distributions and it goes through and it scans them and it determines which ones which where are all the the executable the executable programs in that and then are they what's called a position independent executable which means do they have the security feature called uh, address space layout randomization on or ALS ASLR um, and so what we want to do is we want to get this mapping here of the uh, okay the file name to the boolean value. So okay, actually that's different than what I thought it was. <laughs> um, so in that case, we could do feature name to actually that's perfect. Yeah, that's just perfect. Okay, so we can use this associate spec. So this one maps file name to, you know, Boolean value, right? So what we end up with is this file path and then the bool. And what we want is the feature name and then the result of the feature times 10, right? Um, this might be the perfect time for us to write some documentation on this damn thing. Um, so what we want to do is um, for, so modify or modify the data flow dot flow so that the input 
for um, let's see the input for oh I wonder where the example for this is I know there's an example somewhere Da -da. Okay, modify. Oops. I hate when it does this. Modify the test data flow dot flow. Or you could just do it. Have the test data flow dot flow show that um, edit feature should let me just paste damn it did anybody create that issue that I was talking about with the updating the skeleton readme could somebody do that all right so have the test flow dot show show how or show that edit feature should get its inputs from the ooh, um, let's see ooh, it's going to map the definition isn't it um, Da, 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 da. If we say seed, it gets specific about the definition. If we say um, I thought we had a way to send it directly to some operation um, by specifying alternate origin Agen, do you remember, I thought we had a way to send something directly to a specific operation even if the definition didn't match. Oh, did I don't remember. Okay, um, there's a way to do this. Um, what would, where would that be? Um, uh, where is that? Let's see. Send something to a specific definition. Uh, let's see. Hmm, okay, you know, I'm going to get back to you on this one. Um, there's a way to do this. I swear there's a way to do this. Um, yeah. Can you post that on? The yeah, I will. So let's see. It's from each uh, feature. Uh, there may not be. There may not be a way to do this. Um, but if not, we'll we'll just make one. Uh, I think this may have been. I think I've, this may have been the issue for target. I think this is the issue for target. Yeah, uh, there's a to do in the code for it. That's what it is. I think there's a to-do in the code for it. Okay. Um, it's in... I just saw it. Damn it. Okay, it's in here. Let me just make sure. DF types. Aha. This is what it is. Okay. Uh, okay, but how is that going to work with this? Um, we've got the definition. Seed inputs. We've got 
the features. You can have multiple f features. You can have multiple feature names because the feature name becomes the definition name. Um, so we have like you could either like currently we can either like create it. Maybe we need just a way to say that this can come. Well, the flow says it can come from multiple origins, but it checks the definition. Do we have a way to say it can come from multiple definitions? Don't think we have a way to say it can multi come from multiple definitions. And that's what we need right now, is we need a way for an input to say that because so for the flow right now, what the flow structure does is it says we define where the inputs are allowed to come, like where each input, let me pull up an example. Um, uh, okay, so the flow currently basically it, it says where is the input allowed to come from so this for print output the data input is allowed to come from the mapping output of dffml.mapping.create and for dffml.mapping.create the key input is allowed to come from any of the any inputs in c with a matching definition and the value is allowed to come from any inputs in c which a math which with a matching definition a matching definition is is value or key um, so in this case, and in this case we've got, let's see, it's it's always a list of places where it's allowed to come from. And in this one we have dffml.mapping. This one is a list with an object as the only element of the list. Um, so to specify definitions, we would want to have some kind of syntax like, um, we need some kind of new syntax. Um, so maybe like, uh, we need a new syntax for this. What makes sense? Um, key and now list of seed. So uh, I hesitate to do that def colon thing. That's like very easy to just say def colon and then you know it's a definition, but that's that's annoying. Um, uh, let's see. So it can come from seed and then we want to specify within seed what inputs are allowed there so uh, okay so that's a list item seed and then seed could be basically a list item with a key value mapping in it. Um, so let me just check that this works here. Um, so we'd have just, let's all just agree whether this makes sense or not. Um, so from the origin seed, we can accept definitions in the format of, let's see, right from the, we're basically what we're saying here is for the, and let's make it applicable to edit feature here. So for the flow, for edit feature, the inputs, which is, where'd you go? Feature, feature can come from seed and within seed, it's allowed to be years trust these definitions. Now this looks completely insane as JSON. It looks a little bit insane as, <laughs> as YAML too, but it looks a little bit better. Um, so this does this as a syntax make sense? Uh, yes, but I'm not so sure where you're going with this. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the 
within a data, the data flow structure, we have this flow property. And the flow property is this dict where the keys in the dict are the operation names or the operation instance names is what they really are. Um, and so this edit feature operation, it that within flow, it has this sub, um, it has this, it so flow is a dict and then the keys in the dict are the operations that are in your data flow. Now each operation is also a dict and it has inputs and it can it has it can have inputs and it can have conditions. And within it, and the values in there are for inputs you need it's another dict and you say where um, you it's it's each argument name turns into an entry in this inputs dict here right within yes. this edit feature inputs right and yeah. then the value is a list for this and it's a list of where you want this input to be able to come from like where is this where so so if i'm if i'm um so if i'm about to run edit if, if i'm the the thing that runs the data flow and i need to decide okay like i have these inputs entering the entering the network right so i'm given inputs and i need to decide what operations do these inputs go to i consult the flow and i say okay this this for example we're going to add some inputs and we're going to add an input with a definition of years trust experience and salary right those are the that's that's what we've done here is we've said okay this source is going to add inputs which which definition names match the feature names right yes okay so we want these definitions which by default all inputs are from the seed origin and this is something that i haven't really explained really well but the idea behind this is that you could have sort of different origins of inputs for example if you were running some sort of client server application right and you have this web server um and it's handling uh we we have some inputs that were basically they're static and and we know they're trusted like they're coming from other back-end services or something or they're coming from a config file right the origin might be config or the origin might be back-end right and so then we know we can trust those things right whereas if we have um we could have another origin which is like untrusted or client right and so now by specifying different origins for these things we've ensured that um nothing from un like so if this said for example trusted then only things that came in through a trusted source and were tagged trusted would be allowed to go into f in would be allowed as an argument to edit feature right so if my client sent me something um that was a matching definition it wouldn't be it would never go to edit feature right so because we don't trust it the the source is not trusted so or the origin okay. is not trusted so the default origin is always seed um and so we're just going to leave the default origin and we're going to say okay for for the feature input of edit feature uh the the possible origin that it can come from is seed and then here are the definitions that are allowed um in this case so and then the okay. alter does that make sense uh yes now it makes sense okay and then the the other thing that you'll see some like the other way of specifying this is that we have basically this single pair here which would be saying um you know if we had this other um let me add this here and this is it's obviously this is this is also why we have that oops this is this is also why we have that diagram command is so that we can visualize this whole thing um so for example now this syntax says if there's not a list here basically so if this is not a list then this is the specific input from this operation if this is a list then we're going to treat it as these are the definitions from this origin um and that's something we're going to have to go do um so let me make a screenshot of this or Okay, now let me make this so. So, man, there's a bunch of data flow stuff that needs to be made into issues. Um, implement target, which 
sends a marks input. Uh, I don't even know if we want to do this right now because we know we need to do this. And let's do this first before we decide whether we need to do that or not. Um, so implement um, syntax for flow uh, where we can specify definitions um, within Uh, multiple definitions a source okay um, all right, so yeah we're going to need to do this first um, before we can do uh, before you can sort of Oh, is it 601, 602, no, 603, 604, yes, okay. Um, and then let me comment in here. I'm sorry this took a while, but it's also important that everybody understand all of that, because that's pretty key. So, um, and on this one, uh, blocked by 605. Oh wait, 606. Oh, thank you, whoever created that issue. 607, okay. And then four, use the, okay, in this case we'll be doing, um, we're gonna do feature name. The value is, um, the value is basically whatever the feature name is, so we're probably just going to say, um, oh yeah, this is another sort of thing is, we have the feature name as the input now, rather than previously the RPM file name was the definition and we wanted to map this definition to this. Now we want to actually take the whole feature name and map it to that. So I think you want like, um, uh, Result map to. Ugh, we're gonna have to figure this one out too. Um, uh, I'll just put to do. Okay, we'll have to come back to this. Um, so let's see. If you want to do this to sort of unblock yourself on this. Um, the right place to look is, first off, you need to look in flow, you need to look in dataflow.autoflow, um, and then you also need to look in memory. Okay, so, uh, that's probably the, just the case that we need to write another output operation. Um, it can be very much like associate. It's the beauty of operations. I was asking, I was trying to come up with this this stuff like a couple years ago now, and I was at my work and I asked one of the, I was like it's really stuck on like how do how do we get the data out of the network? Like what how do, how do how do we do that? Right? Like we end up with all this data in the network, and what do we do? We've got all these operations, and I was explaining it to this very senior guy, and he was like, "Well, just make if you've got operations, just make more operations." I was like, "That's brilliant. We'll just make more operations." So now we go about output operations. Um, okay, let's see. By origin, by origin, by origin. Where's flow? Input flow, inputs, update. Operation stage. Oh, we're going to have to update by origin. Okay, this is another thing. So, you're going to want to look in here. Places that will need updating. Okay, and I'm sorry, but I am going to have to go here in a minute. Um, 
So if anyone didn't catch me, uh, like if anyone needed something, I'm going to have to ask you to please ping me on Gitter because I have to make sure my review stuff is all very solid because this is the, the final day. So let's see. Import input flow, input flow, uh, input flow from dict. So that's going to be critical. Okay. Um, right now, it's that. Let's see. Uh, da -da. Inputs, items. Uh, yeah, I think it, maybe it's just this by origin. It might just be this by origin that you need to update in here, and then. Oh, this is a beautiful mess in here. Uh, let's see. Create the item origin if not present. Go origin, item origin. Input set inputs. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, item in by origin. Okay. Where is data flow by origin? Nowhere? There we go. Okay. Input set, input set item item. I think yeah, it's somewhere in here. Somewhere in memory dealing with is it? Let me just make sure it really is by origin. Let's see. Auto flow. So. It's not going to be an auto flow. It's going to be when we're looking at the flow. Um, yeah, it's by origin. By origin is this dictionary that basically maps the stage. Yeah, so it's got the stage. Um, it's got each stage that we can have. So processing, cleanup, and and uh, output. And then within there, there is. Um, there is, what is it? Uh, okay, yeah, it's the possible origins for each item. So yes, okay, so here we say output source stir. So we need to add another condition here, basically. So this is the check for if it's a just says seed. Um, so output source dot items that append operation or where is operation origin and output source of items it's in here I guess it's in here you can let me know if you if you figure it out if not I'll, I'll try to I'll try to stab at it dealing with uh, data flow because um, this okay, is going to be take a look and Try to run some examples and see what I can understand. And I'll ask you doubts, of course. There okay. will be doubts. I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, you probably want to create a new output. Op you can work on the output operation right now. Output okay. operation, um, which Matt, which is similar to associate, or let's see. Yeah, you're basically going to take feature name equals, let's see, what is, is that associate? Feature name, and then, yeah, it's similar to associate. Associate, maybe called associate feature where instead of the first argument signifying that it's, it's the definition um, 
where we'd use the value in value of definition in index zero as the key in a dict we're using the value of index zero as the key in the dict. So the key difference here is the value of the definition in index zero versus the value of index zero. Um, so basically, this is the example. Um, and that produces, where did that go? Ooh, gotta speed this up, sorry guys. Um, so this is the example, and you can see what it looks like here. Um, so it's gonna produce these um, dictionaries where we map this to false, but really what we're gonna end up with uh, for our new, the new operation will end up with something more like this input and then for feature features or associate um, So basically, we're going to take the definition name here, right, and then map it to um, um, what do we have? Uh, feature dot d type. Uh, feature dot well, new feature. We're mapping it to cool. new feature, right? Because so new feature, or well, not it is, or. Okay, so new feature, we don't want this to be salary, we want, we want this to be... Uh, I wrote that for just changing one of yeah. the features, but uh, we'll be changing all of them by 10 or, or we'll be adding, so yeah. that will change. So let's just say, um, this is why this syntax is good, we can just say, new feature dot op dot outputs new feature. And then whatever you put there will be the right one. And then to do change definition. Um, okay. Um, and then the output you're going to end up with is something like, you know, years, and then obviously, you know, years times 10. Um, and then etc. Okay, does that make sense? Oh uh, yeah, I'll take a look at the data flows. Cool. Place. Yeah, there and is. you might might mm, yeah take take see do this output operation first so that you can because what you can do here is you can just throw the inputs in the network and then. Um, have you know to minimally to test it you can create one operation each right and then ensure that it all that your output operation is working there um and then circle back to this guy i mean i'd love for you to understand this more because that's always helpful for more people to understand the data flow stuff but it, it might it might be kind of funky but um so uh it might take a while but yeah if you can if you want to dive into that that would be awesome so all right, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry we didn't get to everyone, um, but so let's just sort of make note of, of who went today. Um, let's see, uh, reviewed. 
um, PR on. Okay, so I've got I've got notes on who went today, and then whoever didn't go today, we'll we'll talk on on uh, Tuesday then. Um, and if you want to talk to me in between, then just just let me know on Gitter, or we we could have a meeting. So, all right, see you guys. Did anybody have anything sort of urgent, or is that work for everyone? No, uh, thank you so much. I'll take a look. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Have a great weekend. Bye.